Hi there and welcome to part two of this look at SMLT's sketch and watercolor papers here. I'm Marty Owings. We'll just dive right in and take a look. Look at this beautiful brown paper. We're going to look at that and the rest of this stuff coming up right now. Well, as mentioned in part one, I couldn't cover everything I wanted to in just one video about these papers. They're really cool. They're made in Lithuania. I put that detail in part one. If you haven't seen part one, go back and take a look at that for reference. Um, but absolutely excited. My friends over at Wet Paint uh, hooked me up uh, and told me about this paper. And I went over and, and purchased a bunch and they dropped it off at my house, curbside delivery and which I really appreciate it. Thank you Wet Paint for that. Um, and last video I did was able to use the two little sketchbooks and and paint in those and use a wet media in them even though they're not designed for that and they held up great. Uh, further investigation those two little notebooks there have cotton paper inside. I think the rest of these are going to be mostly alpha cellulose paper or some combination of alpha cellulose with some kind of a cotton fiber mix maybe wood pulp I'm not sure it doesn't really say and if it doesn't say it's cotton or 100% cotton it probably isn't it's probably alpha cellulose so here's this ginormous pad I had to zoom out you can see my computer off to the side there and all my junk but um, I had to zoom way out to even fit this monster uh, into the camera field of view here so this paper is really nice spiral bound at the top there like I said this is a huge ginormous pad and I couldn't wait to jump right into it um, these papers are by the way acid free I should mention that um, and everything you need to know about the paper is right up front on the cover so everything like you know the, the size the number of sheets the GSM whether it's acid free or not uh, and it's micro perforated too at the top so you can pull the pages right out if you'd like so that's another cool uh, feature of this paper all of them seem to be micro -perf perforated at the top so I like to draw uh, and paint spheres just for practice and fun um, and just because I like to practice the tonal values and gradations and Trying to freehand a, a perfect circle is always a nice challenge, although it can be frustrating at times because it seems like it's never perfect, but I do the best I can. I don't use a compass here. I just freehand these circles, and over time, I I guess I, I get better and better at that. But uh, anyway, I'm using some Daniel Smith watercolor here on this paper, and um, I, I love these colors. These My buddy... Uh, Steve Mitchell over at the Mind of Watercolor. Uh, I saw him work with some of these uh, colors before and I just uh, fell in love with them. This Italian ochre, that that burnt orange there, and that quinacridone sienna. That's really, these are really cool, especially appropriate for fall, right? Kind of cool, cool colors for this time of year. Anyway, I like them and that sphere at top reminds me kind of of the sky blue. But anyway, there's that, and I just wanted to push and push and push this roasted French ochre paint here in tonal value, and it took me a long time, but I eventually got the paper to pill up a little bit, to pull up just a little bit of the fiber on the paper, but I had to really scrub uh, to get it to do that. So I'd say that those pads, even though they're probably regu for regular sketching or ink use, you could do wet on wet media there. So here's their watercolor pad, they call it. This is, they also make 100% cotton pad. This one I do not believe is 100% cotton, but I just swatch out some colors here, see how the paper behaves. Uh, they, they say, or they market it as a uh, lay flat, and it does indeed lay flat. Now here's some wet on wet technique. I first paint in the square, just pure water, and then just add a drop of paint in there. It's kind of wet on wet see how that goes and then I'll mix right on the page so little yellow with that red there and just to bring out an orange and just mixing right on the page which is 
which is always interesting and fun to do. Some papers hold up well, others do not. This paper held up just fine. And back to the spheres, you know, because they're fun. Um, and also, I'm a little obsessed with this, you know. Can you draw the perfect circle? Can you catch the perfect shadow? Can you make the right complementary colors? Um, I drew this lemon. It kind of reminded me of my friend Pam Lure's art. She is really good at drawing these kind of still life images of nature, you know, the leaves and the the fruit. It, she's really good at that. So anyway, I thought I'd give it a try, but it reminded me of her a little bit, um, especially the leaves. I like the way Pam renders her leaves and stuff. If you want to know more about Pam, you could check out a interview I did with her not long ago. I just had the pencil marks in because I, I think the pencil marks around the painting look kind of cool and add like a little bit of delineation. Here's how I'm going to take this paper right out of here. I'm going to stick my finger and run it right across. No problem. Popped right out. So the glue's not so hard as to tear up the paper. You can see there's just a slightest, tiniest bit of buckling here uh, where I painted the lemon because I, I probably have six or eight layers of paint there. But otherwise, really nice job. SMLT, making paper, really nice. Ah, the sweet brown paper right here. I've been waiting uh, for a while to try this. I love tone paper in general, but this paper's uh, really cool. It's got, uh, they call it a rough watercolor paper, but it really isn't that rough to my touch. Um, and they say it's well suited for traditional and liquid watercolors. I don't know if there's a different kind of watercolor other than liquid, um, as well as gouache and pastels. Um, it's got the cardboard cover and a hard back, uh, so you've got a nice surface there, and it's a uh, micro perforated sheet, so you can just pull them right out. The paper is acid free and FSC certified. Um, so, well, here let's let's take a look at it. I paint gouache on here, uh, uh, as well as watercolor and marker. And you can see that the color of the paper kind of comes through with the watercolor a little bit more. Like look at the yellow square there, the watercolor square. You can see the color of the paper comes through because it's more translucent. But uh, I just couldn't wait to try out this tone paper. And we'll do a, uh, I'll do a painting in a minute here, but first let's try a little wet on wet. Spray that really good. It's nice and it's soaked. So we add a little red, blue, and yellow. And on the yellow side, you get a little green mixing with the blue. And on the red side, you get a little purple where it mixes. Now here it is dry. This is like a day later. A little bit of warpage on there, but not too bad, really. And, you know, if you've ever seen any of my other paper review videos, I like to kind of test the paper out beyond its normal limits, push it a little bit, find out what it can do. I've been known to throw paper in washing machines before. If people say their paper's tough, I want to try it out. So anyway, put some of the paper through its paces and you can, you can just roll this paper right up. It's like cardboard. It's like thick cardstock. Hello, who's down there? Hello. But the paper's good. I mean, it's like, you know, you could fold you could fold this paper in half and make like a greeting card out of it if you wanted to. It's nice and heavy. Tear the sheets out and build like a lean-to. A shelter. You could tile your roof with it. Probably wouldn't hold up, but... But there you go, wet on wet. And we'll circle that and leave it here. Very nice. All right. For the next thing, I am going to first sketch out and then paint my rendition of a Jack Kirby era Captain America. And if you don't know who Jack Kirby is, it was basically him and Stan Lee who brought a lot of the uh, modern Marvel heroes to life. So... Pretty much all of them. 
So Jack Kirby was a very excellent comic book artist and somebody I grew up with and not, we weren't neighbors or anything, but somebody I grew up reading his comic books and looking at his art. So that's, that's what I meant by that. And so I'll paint this guy out. Hey, I wanted to mention quick my friend Ivor Harrison. I know him as Harry. You may too. Over at the Art Gear Guide. That's a YouTube channel. I'll put a link down in the description. Harry is celebrating 16,000 subscribers over there. And I was there from day one. I met Harry right out of the gate and we became fast friends. We're both veterans. Obviously, uh, Harry was a veteran of the British Army and uh, I was in the American Army, but veterans nonetheless shared a common bond that way. Uh, but just got to know Harry over the years and really, really happy for him hitting 16,000, which is no small milestone for a YouTube channel. And you know what? YouTubers, um, like channels like the Art Gear Guide that Harry has over there, The Mind of Watercolor, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, there's just so many great channels and with awesome content and people that have poured their lives, fortunes and experiences into making uh, great art or art supply reviews. And here he's going to start up a Patreon and do some more tutorials on his drawing because he really is an extraordinary artist. So go over there and check out his channel and tell him I said hi if you see him. Um, also, just quick mention that... Uh, as I finish up this Captain America sketch, I uh, also wanted to give a shout out to my friends Carl and Denise, um, who are so thoughtful and sweet and nice people. They live in, in Michigan and I live in Minnesota and they were out here to visit wet paint one year and we connected, got together, went out and had a bite to eat, uh, got to know them better and Carl and Denise are just, I consider them friends, you know, it's just like people you meet through, through this channel, through, through the YouTube or social media. Um, you know, sometimes there you just click and hit it off and, and that's the way I feel about them. But anyway, um, my good friend Carl sent me a nice leather bound kind of, uh, holder for, uh, like a field notes sketchbook and I really uh, really cherish that and um, and just wanted to give Carl and Denise a shout out really good people and I enjoy immensely talking to Carl about art so this was a good look at the SMLT Lithuanian made papers and sketchbooks and you know what I have to give these guys uh, Two thumbs up. I really like their papers. I really like what their company is doing, what it's about. Go over and check out their website. Again, I'll have a link down in the description, but really fun papers, really durable. I think well made. This, sure, a little bit of buckling, but this paper wasn't made to be painted on. So, so I think that's really cool. And I love their tone papers, especially that brown paper. That's really cool. So I'm looking forward to getting the 100% cotton um, sketchbook from Wet Paint, and they'll let me know when that's in, but maybe I'll do a review on that. Well, thanks for stopping by today. Uh, check out uh, Instagram. I post there regularly, and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. This has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. <laughs>